On today's show, the Cavs are winners of a nine in a row. Pete Nance is continuing the family business. Sam Merrill, a lot to get to on a grab bag jump around episode of Locked On Cavs. You are Locked On Cavs, your daily Cleveland Cavaliers podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on MBA. That is linkedin.com slash locked on MBA to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. I'm Chris Manning here solo today talking about Cavs Hawks, the nine straight wins, Cavs Magic on Monday night. Sam Merrill and Pete Nance, a whole jump around show here from yours. Truly, thanks again to Jake Stevens, as always. So, Cavs Hawks, nine in a row for Cleveland. A pretty straightforward dominant win for the Whining Golds. Atlanta had these two really nice wins coming into this game with the DeJounte Murray game winners. That was great for them, I guess. But Cleveland was just better throughout this game. They win the first quarter by five. They win the second quarter by nine. They win the third quarter by nine again. And it, I think to their credit, it didn't require a massive Donovan Mitchell game, which is, I think, the most impressive part of this. You didn't have Karis LeVert, who was out with a wrist injury. That's on top of not having Darius Garland, not having Evan Mobley, obviously. So it's Donovan Mitchell and Jared Allen and everyone else who has really played big minutes as of late and stepped up as of late. Even got Craig Porter Jr. minutes in this game. Mitchell is 6 of 17 from the field and 0 of 6 from 3. He does have 8 assists. He does have the one turnover. But it's only 18 points. He... Tied Sam Merrill for being the team's leading scorer. But no Cavalier even broke 20 in this game. Mitchell got to 18. Merrill got to 18. Wade, Dean Wade got to 17. Okoro got to 12. Allen got to 14. Struess 13 in 20 minutes. Niang 14. Thompson Porter in single digits off the bench. The fact that the Cleveland Cavaliers beat an Atlanta team that admittedly isn't very good, that admittedly is in a funk that is outside the play-in in the East right now, all that is true. But the fact that they won this game down two of their best four, three, four players, the fact that they won this game without Mitchell needing to score 27 and have the eight assists, the fact that he was, by his standards, just not very good as a scorer, not very efficient as a scorer, and they still won pretty comfortably, speaks to the confidence I think this team is playing with right now. The fact that you have Dean Wade coming in and taking six threes and making five of them and just letting it fly, and Sam Merrill continues to do what he does and takes 14 threes en route to an 18-point night and had six assists on top of that. Good job, Sam Merrill. You are just continually getting really good performances amid this nine-game win streak. You are continually getting really good, optimal things that are breaking the Cavs' way and giving them a real boon here. If you look at this winning streak, I'm not going to sit here and, and tell you, well, excuse me, seven wins in a row, not nine. Don't know why I was saying nine. Not going to sit here and tell you that this is the best overall run of the whole season. Not going to sit here and tell you that this is continually overly impressive, that they're beating championship contenders over the seven-game run. Because they're not. It's two wins over the Wizards. It's beating the Spurs in a very close game. It's beating Brooklyn and Paris. It's beating the Bulls. It's beating the Bucks without Giannis. And it's beating Atlanta. There are harder games coming. They have Milwaukee twice in Milwaukee later this week. They have the Clippers next Monday at home. Sacramento comes to town in early February. 
Okay, they're Philly. They get Philly at home next month. There are harder games coming, but winning seven games in a row is something. That is proof that this team is playing well, and they're not just, with some exceptions, not just winning games, eking them out like they did against the Spurs. They're often dominating these games. They're often comfortably winning these games. Atlanta is a one sixteen to ninety five win. The Bucks game, obviously, no Giannis, but Damon Middleton and Brook and all those guys are there. Jay Crowder returned, and you won by. 40. You beat the Bulls by almost 20. You beat the Nets by 9 and were in control of that game, I think, for the most part. You crushed the Wizards twice, okay? The Cavs right now are just taking care of business, taking care of business, and winning and winning and winning and building momentum to some degree. They're winning in a bunch of different ways. You know, Niang has the big game against the Bucks. Against Atlanta, it was Merrill, and it was a team effort. Right now, this team is just humming. I, I don't exactly know where to or push this forward. I don't know where to what to make of it to some degree. There's so much we are going to need to figure out with this group once Mobley and Garland are back and what the play style looks like. But the fact that they've won seven in a row, the fact that they've won eight of ten, the fact that set their season didn't implode when Garland and Mobley went out, it's just such a testament to what this team and what J.B. Bickerstaff is doing. That This is not something every team would be pulling off. This is not something that every team in this situation would be capable of, frankly. Not every NBA team in the world is, is fully in this zone where they're capable of doing this stuff. Other teams would have folded. Other teams would have not had Sam Merrill to turn to and not had Donovan Mitchell playing the way he is and not have Jared Allen ascend. You would have had other things break incorrectly. And then you end up in a position where you're falling out of consideration in the East and you're falling into the plane and you're worried about where your season is. Well, the Cavs are now in a really good position. Going into Monday's games, they are just two and a half back of Philly for the third seed. They're ahead of the Knicks as the four seed. Right now, funny enough, season ends today and a lot lot of basketball to go, but Cavs, Knicks, round one rematch. Oh boy. That would be interesting. The Cavs just are in a good position in the Eastern Conference. There's just no way around it. And you're going to get to the end of the season, and you're going to look at this, and you're going to think, okay, the Cavs are a top six seed wherever they end up. And it only happens in part because of this run, because they win seven in a row, because they've been so successful without those two guys. It is something we have, at least I have, kept hitting on the show over and over again. But as Indiana has had some injury issues and slid, as the Magic, who we'll get to in segment two, have fallen back, as that level of the East is is having some transition, you are building something here. And what comes and who buys and who doesn't before the trade deadline is certainly going to have an impact on where this is going. But... Don't get it twisted. The Cavs are in a really good position. The Cavs have taken advantage of what is going on here, and this win in Atlanta is just another case in in their favor here. They are doing the work that they need to do. There has not been griping. There has not been complaining. There has not been Donovan Mitchell, does he want out? There's not been any of that nonsense. There has not been anything but work and getting wins and playing good basketball, and there is something really commendable about that. There is something really awesome about the fact that the Cavs are not out here whining. They are not out here looking for clout, whatever it is. This team is just absolutely showing up, doing the work, and getting on. Like, like honestly, this is about as blue collar of an NBA team as you're going to get of late. That's a weird thing to say. I don't really like that I said it, honestly. But that is where this team is at right now. They're just showing up and doing the work. These are the do the work Cleveland Cavaliers. That's what's going on right now. All right, after this, more work to be done Monday. Cavs Magic. We'll preview that after this. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. At the start of the new year, every small business owner is asking themselves the same question. What's the one move I can make that'll take my business to the next level in 2024? LinkedIn Jobs knows that your success all depends on the team you surround yourself with. And that is why LinkedIn Jobs has created the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. 
Hiring is a really complicated thing. Um, in a previous job that I had, we did use LinkedIn Jobs for Hiring, and it did, as far as I know, talking to our HR team over there, they did a really good job through LinkedIn Jobs and found the right candidates because of LinkedIn Jobs. And LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which make it the best place to hire. Hiring is easy when you have so many quality candidates, so easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. In 2024 here, for me, I'm trying to build my career. I have a new job in real life. I have this. We're trying to make the most of it. So keep doing that with LinkedIn. It's why small businesses are at LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn also knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time or resources to hire. With LinkedIn, thankfully, the process is intuitive, quick, and easy. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked in MBA. That's linkedin.com slash locked in MBA to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Back here on Lockdown Cavs, Chris Manning here solo with you today. Every day is back tomorrow. We'll be talking Cavs, magic, the normal recap, game awards, all of that stuff, and more. So Orlando on Monday is another opportunity for the Cavs to get to an A straight win to continue padding their, their stock in the Eastern Conference. Orlando is in a bit of a funk right now. If you look at their recent play, they have, it was like seven, it was like three out of 10 they were of late. They had had a real slide overall in quality of play from earlier in the season when they got as high as second in the Eastern Conference and were, I, I think, a really fun story. Certainly, that what is going on with them doesn't totally get wiped away because they're of of what they're doing. There's still something really awesome there. And they had a good Sunday win. Paolo Bancaro had 20 um, and a win for Orlando against Miami. Most notably, they got Franz Wagner back from a eight game absence. He had 19 in that game. Wendell Carter Jr. started as did Marco Fulton, a change in their starting lineup. You can check out Locked on Magic with Philip Rossman Reich if you want some more insight on, on the Orlando team. But the Cavs should look to win this game. Yes, it is on the road, but they're the team coming in with ra- the rest advantage. They are the team coming in playing better basketball of late, playing with more confidence as of late. There's something to be said that they are in this position going into this game on Tuesday, on Monday, excuse me, and, and going into this week. The hardest games are coming for Cleveland later in the week. You know, they, they we don't have a line yet. Cavs Magic right now, they're, they're a one-point favorite on the road. That's not nothing. They are money line favorites at minus 116, Orlando minus 102, over under 215 from our friends at FanDuel, by the way. But the harder games are coming, right? Like, we, we talked about this in segment one. We've hit on this in the show. There are harder games this week coming. You get Milwaukee twice Wednesday, Friday. Those are going to be challenges. Clippers next week. But Orlando represents an opportunity to continue doing the work that the Cavs are doing, doing, building on what is working here and and what is giving them a chance to continue padding some wins in the East and continue taking advantage of of the situation for whatever it is. To get another win here on the road against a a top eight East team will matter at the end of the day. To, To be a team that can go to Orlando, down your guys, and win... That is something. That is, again, something you should be looking at. If you're looking at keys to this game, for me, Jared Allen versus Wendell Carter Jr. is an obvious matchup. Carter Jr. back in the starting lineup for Orlando um, after they had done some funky stuff with their centers. There's uh, Jared Allen dot can dominate that matchup, I think, and that would give the Cavs a huge boon. I am also curious to see how they will defend Palo Bancaro and how the, the defensive structure for Cleveland will ultimately look in this game because one of the fun parts of the Cavs' magic matchups in, in recent months has been the fact that you had Evan Mobley guarding Paolo Bancaro. And it was Mobley's footwork and Mobley's feel and all these characteristics he brings as a defender. Go home against Paolo, who is one of the best young scorers in the league, I think, an all-star this year, even with the magic slide as of late. He's that good. You don't have that here. So I think you're going to see Dean Wade defending Paolo. We'll see if Franz Wagner 
plays. Uh, we don't know exactly as of yet as far as injury reports go when I'm recording this. So there, there's something to be figured out there still. The other part of this that I am very intrigued by will be the Jalen Suggs, Donovan Mitchell component of this because Jalen Suggs, despite not being, I think, at the top, top level of that 2021 draft class he was a part of, and, you know, he, he, there's a reason he goes where he goes and, and he is what he is. That guy is an absolute dogged defender. He is absolutely one of the most premier defensive guards in the league right now. Uh, Watching that Magic Heat game on Sunday, for instance, he's just a flat-out menace. So he's guarding Tyler Hero in that, and he's tracking him off ball, off of screens. His job in that situation is to deny Hero, to navigate him through screens. He's not getting caught up. He's not getting decimated. He's not getting picked at. He's actually tracking him, and then he's still playing active, aware, help defense and forcing turnovers. That guy is an absolute stud on the defensive end. I love Jalen Suggs and the way he plays basketball. I love that effort that he brings on that end of the floor. Watching him guard Donovan Mitchell... I'm gonna have binoculars. I'm gonna. Ha- I, I. I'm so excited to watch that. We've seen it before. Mitchell has the capability to win that matchup. He's one of the best scorers in the league. Suggs, you know, is maybe not quite strong enough to deal with some of the Mitchell stuff. But I cannot wait to watch that. The Cavs again, one point favorites. I think this could be a competitive game. I think we'll see if pa- if if Franz plays. We'll see how the Magic look on the second night of a back to back. But that very well could be eight straight for the Cavs. That could be another half a game inching up against Philly. That's another buffer against the Knicks as, as they're jostling for positioning in the middle of these. It's, it's buffer against the Orlandos and the Indianas and Miamis of the world a little bit lower right now. Every game does matter. These games have stakes. These games have importance for the big picture of this Cavs season. And if they win, they get to eight in a row. And then you get this. You do have, a, again, the really tough three games coming against, against Milwaukee twice and the Clippers next week. But eight in a row, down Garland, down Mobley, beating teams that aren't the absolute dregs of the league every night. You're certainly playing some of them, but not all of them, to beat a team in the top eight of the East on the road. That's doing the work. That's doing the stuff you got to do. All right, after this, Sam Merrill praise, some Dean Wade, cautious optimism, and Pete Nance, why that's a cool story, but I'm not exactly sure what he is. That's up after this. Today's episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. Around New Year's, we get obsessed with how to change ourselves instead of just expanding on what we're already doing right. Maybe you finally organize one part of your space and you want to tackle another. Or maybe you're taking your supplements every morning and now you want to actually eat breakfast every day too. Therapy can help you find your strengths. You can ditch the extreme resolutions and make changes that really stick. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It is entirely online. It is designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. I am a longtime therapy goer. I cannot recommend it enough as a way to work on yourself and find what is going on inside you and and be the best version of you. Really, really cannot recommend it. Celebrate the progress you have already made. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked in NBA to get 10% off your first month. That's better. H E L P. That's betterhelp.com slash locked on NBA. Today's episode is also brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. The NFL playoffs are in full force. Sorry, Bills fans, feeling for you after that Sunday night game. But there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That is $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. The app is so easy to use, and there are so many different ways to bet, like live stream game parlays. You can find bets in the new Explore tab. You can make a parlay in the Parlay Hub, and the best way to find popular parlays is in that Parlay Hub, and much more. At FanDuel right now, the Cavs are minus one favorites. They are one-point favorites against the Magic. They are slight favorites on the money line, minus 116 versus minus 
go to, I believe, for Orlando. I had that backwards. It has minus 116 Orlando, minus 102. Over-under set at 215 for total points between the two teams. So check that out at FanDuel. And that's FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet. LA at FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Okay, a couple things here to wrap out the show. Dean Wade. So cautious optimism with Dean Wade. He's taking more shots as of late. He is doing some things you kind of need him to do to be an effective role player. He had six three-point attempts in 25 minutes on Saturday. He made five. That is three straight games where he took four plus threes in a game after he went almost a month without taking more than three in a game. That's a big deal. We need to see if this continues. But if Dean Wade is actually letting these shots fly, if Dean Wade is actually letting shots go and he's being active in that way, that's the Dean Wade Cleveland needs. So be on the lookout for that. To see, let's see how many three-pointers he takes against Orlando on Monday. Sam Merrill, big feature from our, our guy Jackson Flickinger coming Monday at Fear the Sword about him that you can read that I would recommend. Uh, having edited it, I think it's, it's pretty darn good. But I'm just growing in optimism on Sam Merrill. I, I quite like him. I still don't understand fully what he is deep in the playoffs, but I love the way this guy plays. He is an absolute sniper as a shooter. He is by far the best off-ball shooter the Cavs have. Uh, Struess is good, and Struess is taking a ton of volume this year, which is great. But Merrill as the guy who is letting shots fly, who is not giving Trey Young places to hide in those matchups, you know, if... if Markel Fultz has to defend him on Monday. That's going to be a tough night at the office for Markel Fultz if, if that's the way it goes. It is going to be, he's the kind of guy that can really wear out opposing guards, and that guy is giving you something that is super useful, super positive. He's actually fairly smart defensively, even if I don't think he's going to survive getting hunted in the playoffs, but he has been instrumental over this win streak. He has been instrumental in keeping this team afloat. I didn't really expect to see him supersede Craig Porter Jr. in the rotation in the way that we've seen. I would have thought Porter Jr. would have solidified himself, but kudos to J.B. Bickerstaff for going to Merrill, riding him. And I think there's a world, if you, there's a conversation to be had that when Garland and Mobley are back, you need to find elements of what has worked here with the three-point heavy style and the offensive rebounding style that has worked and buoyed them to success as of late. That evolution of Cavs basketball we have seen has to be continued in some way. Merrill and finding minutes for him once this team is healthy, even if it's not 30, if it's 15, I think there could be some real benefit to finding room for Sam Merrill minutes to just get him going and give yourself that dynamicism off the bench. I think there's got to be a a way to find minutes for him, even if it's going to be cramped and maybe it's not every night. But I would be looking hard to find a way to get him some minutes. I think he's earned it. I think he's been really important. I think he's been really good. And getting him on the floor is just another plus shooter you have to turn to who is competitive, who can make secondary passes. There's a lot of good I think he is doing. And I would look to be getting him minutes, I think, when this team is actually fully healthy in in a couple weeks here. No Darius Garland, by the way, on this road trip doesn't seem like so. Maybe the Clippers game next week when James Harden and PG and Kawhi are in town is is when he returns. So we'll see about that as well. Craig Porter, uh, excuse me, Pete Nance, 10-day deal. Obviously the younger brother of Larry Nance Jr., the son, the younger son of Larry Nance Sr., the Cavs legend, the two retired jersey up in the rafters. Cool story. I love that they've made a big deal about this. I love that there is this Nance legacy within the organization. I think that's cool. I think that sports teams as much as they are businesses and things we want to get mad at and listen and watch podcasts about and all that stuff they are these civic institutions at the end of the day pete nance getting to be part of that family legacy is really cool he's not going to play much he played two minutes in garbage time against atlanta the same amount of minutes and seconds as damian jones i suspect he'll be back in the G League after a second 10-day or wherever this looks like. I think long-term, there's a lot to prove. He's got to figure out how to shoot. He's got to kind of round out his skill set to be a more modern big four type. But if he's on a two-way next year, wouldn't hate it. 
if they convert Craig Porter Jr.'s contract this year and he's the two-way replacement instead of uh, Sharif Cooper, I wouldn't hate that. I think that I could see some value in that. He is a little older as a prospect, so there's certainly stuff to figure out with him and, and what his ceiling ultimately is. I don't know if this is an NBA guy. There's a reason he won a draft it. There's a reason he spent five years in college, right? Like That tells you something about what he is as a prospect. But it is really cool to see him in the NBA. It is cool to see him with the Cavs. It is cool to see him get love from his brother all across his Instagram and on Twitter. That is awesome to see. I hope one day... I, I'm going to look. When do the when do the, the Cavs play the Pelicans? I'm looking at this in real time, so I apologize. Um, the Cavs are in New Orleans on March 13th. They... So maybe there they could get if if he's like on a two way and travels with the team, maybe like they could do a brother jersey swap kind of moment. That could be really cool. It's a long ways off. That's nearly two months. A lot will happen between now and then. But it, this is cool. Again, I, I you can watch his highlights. Uh, he had a triple double. He's like the first charge player in like two years to get a triple double in a game recently when he was with down in the G League. So good for him. I like this opportunity. I like giving him a run. I like getting him and seeing what you got with him. And if he ends up running two-way, I don't think that is really the worst thing in the world. Um, If you're Cleveland and this is where you end up with him. I don't hate that one bit. But that is going to be it for Locked on Cavs for Monday, January 22nd. I'm Chris Manning. Thanks again to Jake Stevens. Enjoy the rest of your day, everyone. We'll talk to you after Cavs Magic.